Hi everyone, welcome to Becky's Crafts and Goodies. Got a bit of a crafty video here for you today. Um, now, we're going to be using these jars. Now, this literally is just an old jar that had some, I think it had chocolate spread in it. I washed it up and took the label off, made sure it was all thoroughly dry, and then it's ready to use. Now, um, these are great because you can recycle lots of old things it saves them going to the recycling bin you can if you don't have any of these jars you can actually buy them from Poundland and places like that I think they sell three for a pound in there so I think B&M have some as well so if you did want to get cracking on a project like this and didn't have any to hand then you could always go and buy them now my jar here has got quite um, a wide lid and that's good for this particular design for what I want to put around the lid so um, just look, you know, you can use the thin ones that, that have got jam in, but, you know, just bear in mind um, what designs you're going to do on them. Now, with this video, I have actually already made one yesterday, but I'm going to do like three different techniques and just see how they come out different, really. So this is the one that I made yesterday. And I used for this, I didn't cover the bottom. Um, I just literally put some of this over the top. This came from Paper Chase and I used that as sort of a, a base. I wanted to be able to see through it because I wanted to put the candle through. Um, but I'm not quite sure I like the finish. So I'm going to make this second one slightly different. So I'll show you along the way how I did this and how I'm going to do the other one. So to start with, what we're going to do is I painted the second try in gesso now somebody asked me what gesso was the other day and it's basically it's it, you could say it's like a base coat it's like a base white and this one that I've got is acrylic gesso so this has had two coats of the acrylic gesso and that's something I didn't do on this first one I didn't go on with with any paint to start with what I am going to try again is to use this now, as I said to you, this came from Paper Chase. It's a bit similar to the rice paper, but it feels more like material. It's really thin and it feels, it feels soft. So again, I'm going to try and do the same effect. So I think this is around about dry now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go around the pot with this, I suppose we'll call it material. I will pop Paper Chase's um, website down below. And I'm going to go around it, but what I found was it does scrunch up quite easily. And then that can look quite messy on the finished product. And if it rips, it looks messy, it leaves holes. But I'm hoping because I actually painted underneath on this one, it will look a lot neater. So what I'm going to do with this is to cut out a strip. Now this is going on my fireplace. And um, it was an idea that I wanted to get round to doing at Christmas time, but um, I didn't have the time, so um, I thought we'll do it now. So all I'm going to do is get the jar, and this is just a rough measure. We won't be including this top lid part, so just get your, we'll call it material, and go to just under the um, where it sort of screws on there. And then at the end here, we're going to go a bit further than the end because we're going to tuck it under. So what I did is just made a mark. Always best to go a little bit more than you think. I'm going to roll it round just to get the um, to get the size. And I think I went round twice last time. Okay. And then I'm just going to cut that out I mean this is very rough it doesn't matter that it's rough and I'll probably cut out two just in case I mean I might only need one because I've put the gesso but I'm not sure so that's one piece I'm just going to cut the next piece now so what we need now is some Mod Podge and I'm going to use the matte sealer okay now this is basically it's a glue it acts as a glue it acts as a finish it seals things it's water-based they do different types, so many different types. Um, Mod Podge is a make, but it is one of my favourite um, my favourite types. I generally reach for this all the time. And I like the matte one um, because it leaves like it doesn't leave a shiny finish. But you can get the gloss. The gloss is in the red packet. And I will leave a link for this down below. And this is definitely something that I would suggest that you have in your crafty stash. 
Right, so I've just popped and got my brush and I use the first edition, the Deco Nash brush. I really like this for doing decoupage. Or decoupage. So what we're going to do is, now this is dry, we're going to get some of the Mod Podge and we're going to put a thin layer over the top. Now I'm not going to do it all, I'm just going to work in sections. And then get this here, it's very soft, very fiddly. We're going to put that just like that. So it kind of goes into the lip here. You don't have to be as careful with it as a napkin, but it is still quite delicate, so you still have to be careful. And we're going to have this longer part here, and we're going to fold that under. So all we're going to do, a big lump of Mod Podge there, all we're going to do is do exactly the same and go all the way around. Now, with crafting, I know um, lots of you guys have got into crafting through watching the channel, which is absolutely fantastic because that was one of my main aims. And I try to keep, if I can, the crafting not too difficult. I know lots of you on here, lots of, of if you are really good at crafting and maybe some of the things I do are probably a little bit too easy for you. Um, but you can adapt them and you can make them more difficult and adapt them to your, um, you know, your style and your ability. But the reason um, that also I wanted to do the channel was to get people into crafting, to give them a little bit of an escape, because I know that lots of people that watch the channel have started um, doing crafts since watching the channel and it gives them just that relaxation it helps them to do something that they really didn't think that they'd ever be able to do and um, that's kind of my aim really and that's what um, what I wanted to achieve so I'm sorry if some of you think that they are a little bit too easy um, now you see look there I've got a, a splodge I'm going to cover that in and let that dry a sec so I'm sorry, like I say, if you think they're they're too easy crafts, but I don't want to go too advanced because um, I want everybody to be able to do these, these kind of crafts and find your little escape. And I think as well um, with the channel and with the shopping trips, you know, it's not just about, oh, going shopping and you love shopping sort of thing. Sometimes it's just the relaxation. It's the getting away from the rat race of the world and everything that's spinning around and life's so hectic and sometimes when you just sit down and watch somebody having a wander around the shops or doing a little bit of craft it just takes you away for that time from reality and it just switches your mind off because when I'm watching things like that my mind just completely switches off and that's kind of what it's about really um not being a shopaholic or wanting to spend money here there and everywhere it's um I go just to, to help transport you guys to um, to somewhere different, hopefully a little bit more relaxed. Right, so let's see if this is dry enough to, to go round. I don't know if you can see there, it has ripped slightly, and that's even with me being very careful. So, But it looks like it's got some little flecks of the... Um, gold flakes in it now I did actually buy some petals because I was going to do some petals in a craft and I know that um, one of my subscribers has um, mentioned that she picked some petals up because I said I was going to do a DIY now I did try but I thought it turned out a little bit rubbish so um, I'll put that on the back burner for a second but um, hopefully I'll have time before Valentine's Day to do something else if it's dead rubbish then I won't bother um, I can't really show you crafts to do that turn out really bad can I so I'm just trying to straighten this and it is going on quite nicely you have to excuse the paint on my fingers but that's what happens when you're doing stuff like this so I'm just going to fill that in there and as I say to watch the the crafty videos that I do you're probably not going to like every single video I do some of you probably just like the craft ones some of you just like the shopping ones but at the end of the day just watch what you like Watch the ones that you want to watch. And um, 
let's not worry about it too much, eh? So I'm just going to stick this extra part down here. And then I'm going to stick this part, and it's kind of a little bit like um, folding a present in, I suppose. So you put your glue in, and then I'm going to paint with the glue down. And just be careful not to go over the material too much because it will rip. And I'm hoping this one turns out a little bit better than the first one I did. By putting the gesso down, by being a little bit more careful on this step, I'm hoping that it does come out a bit nicer. So my plan is to put these on my fireplace and that's why I want two the same. So I'm not going to be tempted to mess about with it too much. I'm going to leave that now to dry and I um, hope that that dries quite nicely. And if we do need to put another one, of course we've got this extra bit that we cut off so I could always go round again. But at the minute, that doesn't seem to be too bad. So we'll just let that dry now. Right, while that's drying, we're going to decorate the lid. So I'm going to use for the lid some of this white rice paper. So I'm going to draw, literally just draw around the lid here. And if you can see, there's some um, writing on there, some best before dates. So you want to hide that. Now you can paint the lid if you want, but I'm not going to. So I'm just going to cut this out and I'm just going to fold it over. This is the same way that I do my, um, my cake lining tins. Just fold them and then it just makes it easier to cut a circle. You can go again if you want. But just... literally cut around like that and then that gives you a circle there and that will then stick on the top I'm going to do another one but I'm going to cut it slightly bigger than that one so do the first one around the same size and then cut the next one so we'll do the same thing fold it over but when we get the um, sometimes you have to lift it up so you can see I'll fold this one over again it feels a bit like coffee filter paper actually so where you've got the line there I'm just going to cut it slightly bigger than the line and then I'm just going to rub out the pencil line that I've made okay so now we're going to decorate around the edge and I'm going to use let me just show you this lid. I'm going to use this trim here. I've had this a long, long time, and I do think I bought it from eBay, but I couldn't tell you who or, or when or what you know where from. It's really nice. I like it because it's got this pleating down it, and it kind of covers um, the top part of the jar. So if you want this kind of look, look on eBay. Maybe if you go into sort of any shops, you know, that sell this sort of thing, just keep your eye out and pick it up when you see it. So all I did is you just get the lid and you measure a piece. You hold it at the side, measure a piece all the way round. This is the piece that I measured. And I tend to go a little bit bigger than I need to, just to leave room for error. So can you see I've measured it a little bit bigger? And all I'm gonna do now is just to stick that down with the glue gun. So just put a splodge on the side to get going. Be dead careful. Glue guns are not my friend. I've still got a mark there. I don't know if you can see. I burnt myself. Some of you that have been with me for a little while will remember that. I think it was in the summer last year. And it was an absolute corker. So be very, very careful with glue guns. I'm just going to go round and stick that down. So let me know if you normally watch the shop with me videos but you are here today watching a crafty one because I'll be very pleased if I've got you watching some little crafty projects as well and hi to all my new subscribers as well I hope you've entered the 15,000 subscriber giveaway
if you haven't I'm going to link that down below but if you're watching this after February the 1st 2019 then don't enter because it's closed and what we're going to do here is just put a splodge of glue on that end bit and remember we made it a bit too big I'm going to stick that down and then I'm just going to trim trim off the excess she says with the scissors not working I'm going to go a bit more this has got beads on it so you just have to like work in between the beads my scissors weren't very sharp there we go so that's the the start of the lid and then I'm going to stick on top one of these flowers because as I said I want two that are virtually the same even though it's a slightly different process I made them um because I'm going to put them over my fireplace although this one it's a bigger flower but I don't think you'll notice and I've only got this one so we'll use that so I'll get my um glue gun give it a splodge that's a technical term put that on the top and that just needs to sit for a second so that can dry I think it looks quite nice having a bigger flower on actually as well so there we go so that's our lid so we'll put that to one side that's our other lid there we'll stick that back on this this part so if we move back over now to this it is kind of dry there are some sort of wrinkly bits but I think that's nice and that kind of adds to it I think it's just when it gets ripped I think that's when um when the problems start but I think what I might do I think I might go over it with the next the next layer so for the next layer we're going to use exactly the same technique that we did before I'm going to be quite careful because although this is almost dry it's not quite dry so remember it will rip very carefully very carefully that's not English is it it will rip very easily be very careful that's what I was supposed to say it's actually got some silver in this as well so that's nice we're just going to work our way around <laughs> drying I'll just show you the packet for these flowers um, it says prima flowers I got these for Christmas and I think we got them from Amazon um, Carl bought me those for Christmas um, so the decoration I'm going to do the same exactly the same and this is rice paper now a really good seller on eBay is called um, I think it's called the napkin shop or something like that but what I'll do is I'll link the um, the shop in the description down below she sells tons and tons of stuff and she's really really good there's also a lady called Helen's homeware as well she's a really good napkin seller um, I generally just use those two so what I've done is I've cut out one of these flowers from the rice paper now I cut the rice paper when I do the napkins I use the water and go around with the um, with a paintbrush um, but I cut those it does give you a harsher line as you can see and it's harder to blend but I'm hoping that with the um, gesso underneath and with two layers of um, this stuff, I'm hoping that it won't kind of show too, too much. And what I am going to do is to put some glitter over as well. And I'm hoping that it doesn't leave these kind of gaps because there are some sort of gaps in this where I didn't kind of handle this stuff as probably well as I should have done. Um, so I'm hoping that the second attempt will look a lot neater. Um, the third pot that we're going to make we're going to make that in a second I'm going to use a napkin over the top so I'm just going to see the different effects really and just to see whether it works better with the rice paper or the napkin I think it will blend better with the napkin but I'm just hoping that um, that this will kind of be enough and um, and look look good so yeah that's the rice paper as well so I'll just move that to one side and let's see if this pot is dry enough to use yeah it is so that's at the side so it's touch dry now so um it's just dry enough for me to use so what i'm going to do is to stick this on the front and 
you can see that the lines are not too harsh and by that I mean that there's not too much difference between this little bit we've cut out and the bottom and it blends quite nicely so you just got to work out where you want your front um, I think probably that will do for the front there and we'll stick where should we have and then we'll see I'm finding bits wrong with all of it now so I'm perhaps not best not to look and just stick it on so pour some more Mod Podge in and then stick this down now I am going to put some glitter on this as well and I don't think glitter should be confined to Christmas because glitter is cool and I think that you should be able to glitter anything and any project that you want whether it's Christmas or not so I'm just going to stick this Just going to stick this on the front and then put some more of the Mod Podge over the top. Now this is the point that I'm going to glitter it. Now that doesn't look too, doesn't actually look too bad. I don't think it looks much better putting the gesso underneath but I'm still going to put the glitter over the top because I want it to match the other one. The glitter I'm going to use is this Nouveau I love this stuff. It's really, really, they make some really, really good product products. So I'm going to get that open. And I'm just going to get a piece of card to put underneath. And all you do is you just fold it in half, and that makes it easier to um, just sprinkle the glitter off. So you get your Mod Podge, and you start with your brush. And we're going to do it in little sections, okay? So it's not to overwhelm it and it doesn't matter if some falls off because that's what we've got this this card for we're going to sprinkle over and tap like that and as you can see it's starting to to glitter and we're going to go round in little sections and it just makes it easier to do if you're not doing too much at once so don't forget um, I did put the wrong Instagram link on and I actually the, the link for Ebony's channel wasn't working as well but I think I'll fix those now I think I must have done something while well, copy and pasting and messed it up but I think it's all sorted now I think Ebs wants to try and get to 500 subscribers She's not far away, so just check her channel out. If not already. So we're just going to put some over, just kind of a little bit lighter over this front bit. I'm not going quite as heavy on the glitter. There we go. Uh, should I do the bottom? No, I'm not going to bother doing the bottom. And there is that part there and it does look quite nice I'm not sure what it looks like on camera but it does look quite nice in reality so I'm just going to leave that to dry now and once that dries that is going to be finished um, and they do look different once they dry I mean this looks um yeah it looks quite nice so um after it's finished what you can do is go over it again with some Mod Podge just to seal the the glitter in or if you've got some like spray adhesive you can you can go over the top in that and all I've done in this part is I've put one of these little tea lights now this is a sparkly one I got this in the Christmas sale from Morrison's um, but again as I said don't just keep sparkling glitter for Christmas we can have that any time of year um so I'm just going to let that dry now and then pop a tea light in in the meantime I can scoop up my glitter here put this back into the tub and we'll have a go at doing the um, doing the other one I've got about another half an hour before I've got to go and do anything else so we'll um, we'll give this other one a go and hopefully this one here we could kind of use as a little bit of a Valentine present as well I'm going to use a different um, slightly different method same principle but I'm going to use a napkin on the front and I thought if I pick one with maybe roses then that could be like a bit of a valentine kind of gift um, to get the white effect I'm going to try and use this white rice paper um, to cover it over now what you can do um, is you can do like the decoupage kind of feel where you break bits up and stick it on but I wasn't sure 
what that would look like. I wasn't sure if that looked a bit weird. And with rice paper, you've got that shiny part on the back. So, um, I'm not sure. Now, I might just do one layer of gesso underneath this just to help out. I think it might be all right with the, um, with the rice paper, but I'm gonna just do one layer of gesso just to sort of cover myself, I think, really. I'll cover the jar, really. So while that's drying, we'll use our time wisely and we'll start and decorate the lid. And I'm just going to do that in exactly the same way. So cut round the two circles and stick it on just exactly the same way that we did before. So we're going to chop back over now and start and do the, the, the glass part of the, um, the jar. And we're going to use this here. So I'm just going to roughly, again, roughly measure it. I'll perhaps get my pencil for this because um, it will write on. Now, I have no idea if this is going to work or not. That's me being honest. So I'm just going to fold that up. Well, fingers crossed. We'll see together, won't we, eh? We'll see together if it works. Okay. So I'll measure that around about there. We're going to do the same thing at the bottom. I'm hoping just one go round will be enough. I'll probably just cut a little bit off there. As I say, this isn't too technical it's not got too many measurements so we're kind of roughly working it out and we'll just do exactly the same thing with our mod podge it's great stuff i know some people use pva glue and they water it down slightly and that's absolutely fine if if you want to do that i just love mod podge itself so I always tend to use this. So obviously because we're going around something curved, it is going to be tricky. Um, we might have to put some sort of slits in there, but we'll go around the best we can. And I'm putting the, the shiny bit down. I think I'll probably cut into those sections there. see we'll just um, poke them in like that but you are going to get it rippled and it is going to be sort of pleated a bit but that's fine isn't it it's quite cold down here this morning I've got my little heater on and it's really really warmed up now I'm gonna have to turn it down I think I think I'm kind of going at a bit of an angle but it's like when kids start writing and they write, you know, and they, they sort of go down the down the page like that. I think I'm going to the side a little bit, but we're real life crafting. I'm not going to straighten it because I do believe if I do, I'm going to get a big ripple. I could cut it, I suppose. But I can't be bothered, so we'll just go with this. Hold it round. Cut that down there. Now this is not covering too bad. So this bit here we'll just trim off. I, mean, I could have done it in two sections or snipped it but to be honest this is working just the same it's not going to matter too much is it God, i've got to switch that far off let me just pause the video a sec and switch that off and i'll snip these bits here as well down it's quite good fun doing this 
I find crafting quite therapeutic. And especially if you know you make something nice and you're quite pleased with what you've made. I'm not, I've not decided if I'm going to put glitter over the top of this or not yet. It depends how bad the paper looks, because <laughs> glitter can hide a multitude of sins. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing at the bottom, but for this, what I'm going to do is to put the side in that's smallest first, poke that in. And I'm going to cut some slits just exactly the same way that we did around the neck. <coughs> she says dropping Mod Podge all over a pencil. Okay, so I'll do that part first because that's smaller and I'm going to fold that over just so that bit gets covered. Okay, and then you just work your way around. that bit a bit more. That's it. Thank you to everyone that's entered the um the competition so far. I haven't um I have read lots of the comments but I haven't commented on them because I'm waiting um for a bit so I can write all the entries out and I don't want to uh to miss anybody so that's why I haven't commented back. I'm not being rude. And thank you to those who have done a VR, that's really kind of you as well. Thank you for that. Right, let's put that down there. That little bit there can just kind of tuck in a bit. That should be fine. Okay. So we're going to let that... I'm going to let that dry a little bit and while that's drying I'll pop that over there while that's drying it's not going to take too long I don't think we'll um, we'll finish the lid so for the lid I'm going to do it in the same way as before but use this here as I say have a look on eBay for for things like this I'm just going to go all the way around cut off a little bit more than I think I need and stick it on. I love crafting because it's kind of just like adults sticking and gluing. You know, it's just like kids doing the normal sticking and gluing, and it's that's what makes it so much fun. pretty this trim and I like it because it's got hearts on too so if this is a valentine gift that would be quite nice wouldn't it we'll wrap that round there without burning our fingers a little bit more and these are good because these screw on these lids so um but you can you can decorate so many different styles of jars with lids without lids just look and see what you've got and just get an old one that you just wash and you know don't buy anything particular especially if you're starting out and if you ruin it what does it matter if you ruin it you think oh my god that's really bad it doesn't matter does it give it a go these scissors really are awful. I've even cut it a bit short because they're that bad. Right, stick that bit down there. I'm just going to let that dry. I might have to just tidy that up a little bit. So we'll just let that dry for a second. Right, so let's clear a few bits out of the way. Um, so we're going to decorate the top. So that's the side bit. And we're just going to put one of these napkins on the top. I'm just going to take that little design out there. I have got a decoupage tutorial. I do even have a playlist 
if um, if any of you are interested. Maybe you decoupage at the moment or it's something you'd like to get into. So I will link that below. So do click on it because there's loads of videos on there from probably when my channel wasn't as popular. But um, lots of you guys have been with me for a long time and I appreciate that. Just to let you know as well, Courtney went to a concert and she absolutely loved it. She bounced and jumped and wore herself out. So I'm really pleased that she was um, she was well enough to do that. She's back to school as well. She's got some mock exams that she's doing. So the school are being very good though with her illness and um, accommodating very well. So hopefully she should. Um, she should do okay so that's going to go on the top I'm just sizing it up working out what extra bits I need to take off her proper exams are in May May onwards but they do quite a lot of mock exams which can also be very stressful can't it Just going to separate these and this then is going to go on the top as I say if you've wondered what I just did then check out the um, the tutorial in the description and all will become clear it's one of my first favourite crafts I ever started because it's dead easy to do and it looks like you've spent hours doing it. Okie doke. So that is the little lid. We'll let that dry for a second. And while that's drying, this is touch dry now, so... I'll do the, um, the pattern on the front of this one. For this, I'm going to use this napkin here. I've used this one before. In the summer, I did quite um, a lot of upcycling projects where I, um, I got some old bits of furniture, did them up. I did a bureau, a Welsh dresser, a table, and they're all in my dining room now. So I'll try and put the, the, the playlist for those as well. We'll be doing some more projects like that. We're going to have a look at some more um, at the shops again. There's a lovely shop um, called Preloved that we went to go and see. I'll be contacting um, the owner, Gay, and um, seeing if we can come and have another little nosy around because they have some really nice stuff in there. So we'll be going to have a wander around there within the next few weeks if it's all right with them. And it's nice to sort of learn different techniques. I do feel that my learning takes a bit of a back seat sometimes when I'm doing the channel because um, I'm kind of always thinking what I can do for you guys really and not maybe moving forward myself but I suppose we could learn together, couldn't we? Okay, so that's that part. Just separating these. We want just a top layer. It is very fiddly. This is why the, the um, rice paper is easier to work with. But it doesn't give the same effect. And the jagged edges give this a really, really nice effect. And it kind of blends in really, really well. But this does feel a bit like blotting paper or like coffee pe filter paper. Probably it's the same sort of thing. Where's the cling film gone? I always lose cling film. Put that over there. But as I say, this would make a nice Valentine's present. I would like this if someone gave this to me. 
might have to make it for myself, eh? I'm not sure anyone's going to make me one, so. Right, there we go. That's that on there. That looks really nice. You could even put another one around the back if you wanted to. You could kind of go all the way around. I mean, I've just, just put one on the front, but it's completely up to you. That looks really nice. And then look, when you team it up with the lid, look at that. That's looking really cute, isn't it? I really like that. So we're just going to let that dry for a second. Right, so while that's drying, I've decided, I think it looks a little bit flat here, so I'm just going to put a bow on the front because I don't think that looks quite right. So I'm going to make one of these bows like we did before. And again, I'll try and um, link the video for that down below as well. Just in case you want to know how to make them. But of course, if you caught the video, then you'll know. I'm just going to grab my ruler because I'm not sure <coughs> if I've measured that to the right size. It seems a little bit big. It needs to be 15. Yeah, it is too big. So let me just snip that. Actually, that's about the right size for the next bit that I need. That's it. I just wanted to do that quickly. Hold it in half, and then we're going to glue these bits down. Don't use too much glue here. And you just get a little point. Do the same on the other side. I've quite enjoyed making these this morning. I'm going to see my mum in a minute. And Chloe and little Alfie. We're going to Morrison's. But I've just got time to do this. And I will edit this later on when I get home. I'll just put that in the middle there. I've got that about central. Sorry if I'm going out of shot. I'm... I've got a tripod stuck in the way. I need to get one of those cameras that go over the top, really, like a tripod over the top, but I'm not sure how to facilitate that at the moment. So we're, um... so we're just going to pull this together. Get a little bit of string. I have got a video that is in the pipeline with these little bows that is coming very soon. I started to make some yesterday, but I ran out of time, so I didn't get that many done, but I will be doing a video with them soon. Again, I bought this lace from um, eBay. They sell so much on there, don't they? Although Amazon is really good as well. You can get things so much quicker. Right, so that's the little middle part. I've got glue everywhere. I'm just going to stick that in there. I say these don't take that long to make, really. They're just a little bit fiddly. This is the back. Snip that bit off. And there we have a really super, super cute bow. Right, so when you just stick the bow on, remember, put the lid on and do it up tight so you know where it's going to be. Okay, I'm going to put that at the back. That's it. So I'm just going to stick the bow on now and I've got my kind of join bit at the back. I'm just going to get the bow. I'm just going to stick the bow on now. I've put some hot glue on and just literally hold that 
down for a second and that is that stuck on you could also put like another embellishment on there if you wanted to um, but there we go that's them all finished let me put a little tea light in that and I'll show you them all done <laughs> 